Has thou, dear, parted for the heart of all my soul? Long time, you alone are my heart, desire and I long. To worship Thee, You alone are my strength, my shield. To You alone may my spirit Desire and hope to worship you.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we are in lockdown for the second time. For those very few of us who are here, and those who are following us, on these means we are using, we want to reach all of you and proclaim the word of God, which cannot be stopped. We want to offer this Eucharist celebration, asking God to see to the end of coronavirus so that we may come back and give praise and we proclaim the gospel not on empty pews where you get no response but when the church is once again full of the people of God and this is not too much for God God is able to do it we put our faith and a trust in him to prepare ourselves to celebrate sacred mysteries let us call to mind our sins I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh, <laughs> 
glory, glory to God in the highest. On peace, on peace to His people now. Glory, glory, glory to God in the highest. On peace, on peace to His people of those who hope in you. Graciously hear our pleas and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing. Grant us always the help of your grace that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. I have lifted high the lowly tree. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. 
birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it. Every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the response, Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high, to proclaim your kindness at dawn and your faithfulness throughout the night. The just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Response. It is good to give thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock, in whom there is no wrong. Response. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Whether we are at home or away, we aspire to please the Lord. The second reading. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Chapter 5, verses 6 to 10. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous. Although we, we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Brothers, we stand and receive the gospel. Echi gambo cha ruhanga tujiange Omusonda sonda zenzi Be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep, would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of his own accord, the land yields fruit first the blade, then the ear then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. 
he said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all the seeds of, on the earth. But once, it's, once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shed. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them. But to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is compassionate and all the time. I want to begin our reflection with the hymn which we shall sing post communion. But we sing the, we sing the first stanza to proclaim the greatness of God in spite of what we are going through. We need to proclaim the greatness of God. So it is the second page, post-communion, then sing my soul. Oh Lord my God, the choir, organist choir, and we all participate. celebrating the 11th Sunday in the ordinary time. And this is the first Sunday to celebrate under lockdown. In our prayer, this is what we have asked of God. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you. And one of the reasons we have come here is because our hope is in God. We know that we can do nothing without him. And then the prayer continues. Graciously hear our pleas to show that God hears our prayers. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing. We can do nothing without God. We have been terrorized by coronavirus. This is the second year. But has it helped us, has this time helped us to come to God, to know that without him we can do nothing? Or we only think that with our brains, with our muscles, 
with our wealth, we can overcome this. Since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing. Grant us your help and your grace. And this is combined with keeping your commands. We are here, my brothers and sisters, to celebrate God's love, God's providence, God's care, protection, and his greatness. This world belongs to him. But what is going on nowadays, many people have doubts whether God hears the prayers and what and what, whether someone else is in charge, whether the evil one is conquering. The evil one has no place in his God's design to triumph. God is still very much in charge. My brothers and sisters, in spite of what we are going through, when places of worship are no longer accessible, numbers are limited. We are making an effort to reach you wherever you are by these means. We must continue to, to proclaim the word of God whether you are present or not, but you have, our voice will reach you by sowing the seed of the kingdom of God. Sowing the seed of the word of God. We continue to guide the people of God in these very difficult times, these trying moments of COVID-19 that has already claimed so many lives. Very many people are infected with the virus. Hospitals and health centers are overwhelmed by the numbers of patients. People are becoming desperate and they lose hope. Many people have lost relatives, friends, and so forth. Oxygen is lacking. Respirators in scarcity. Schools are closed and the pupils and the students are at home. Many places of work have closed. People have run away to their respective places, to their villages, because apparently the city does not seem to support them anymore. At this time, people need guidance, morally and spiritually. People need consolation and assurance that God has not abandoned us to ourselves. People need encouragement that one day we shall see an end to this pandemic. That one day we shall come back and the congregate get in these places of worship. We need to have faith and trust in God. So we need to pray. Pray without ceasing. In our respective places, our homes, we pray to God to put an end to the current crisis, this is a threat of COVID-19. In the first reading from the prophet Ezekiel, the book of the prophet Ezekiel can be divided in three parts. The first part, the, the threat of an enemy which is coming to attack the people of God. The second part is when the people of God are taken into captivity in Babylon and they are suffering there. And you know this psalm by the rivers of Babylon. When they were in Babylon, those who were tormenting them asked them, 
Sing for us what you used to sing in Zion. And they said, we cannot sing. How can we sing the song of the Lord in a foreign land? In the Latin, it sounds very nice. Quo modo cantabimus, canticum domini in itera aliena. How dare we sing the song of the Lord in a foreign land? The third part is where we get the readings. That the prophet announces restoration, that there is hope in spite of what we are going through, in spite of what the people are going through. God could not abandon his people. There is hope. There is hope that God is going to restore the fortunes of Israel. He gives them assurance that God has not forgotten them. That God is with them in their suffering. They are not meant to be in Babylon forever. Even for us, we are not meant to celebrate Mass for empty pews. A time is coming when the doors of the church will open. God will take from the crest, the, the first reading, God will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, topmost, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and a lofty mountain. On a high, not a low, no, no, on a high lofty mountain so that everybody will, who has eyes will see how God transforms the situations. On the mountain heights, you cannot have anything higher than the heights. And that's where he's going to plant it. So that people may see that the God of Israel is a God who promises and a God who brings the promises to fulfillment. And that is the God we worship. And he says, I myself, I'm not sending a messenger. I'm going to plant it. And because I've said it, it's going to be. And he says, that tree, branches, it will bear branches. We have branches, and those branches, they will not be empty of fruits. They are going to bear fruits. It's going to be a majestic cedar, where birds of every kind shall dwell beneath, beneath it, and every winged thing will find shelter there. And how does he conclude? And the trees, and all the trees of the field, all does not exclude. They will know that I am the Lord. The trees he's talking about are not those trees in the fields. But this is symbolic to people. That the people will come to know, even ourselves, we shall come to know, that God has not abandoned us. They will come to know that God brings law, the high trees, those who exalt themselves, he's going to bring them law, and they lift up the lowly. That's the Magnificat. And that is our faith. Wither up the green trees, and make the withered tree bloom. That even in the situations of hopelessness, there is hope with God. And he concludes, as I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. So that his word does not go empty. What comes out of his mouth must be a reality. The Lord transforms the situations. Even our trans situation we are in 
is going to be transformed. To exalt the lowly and the comfort the sorrowing, those who are crying for their dear ones, and to humble the proud. When you come to the gospel, Jesus teaches by using parables. And what is a parable? A parable is to place what is known to teach from the known to the unknown. That's a parable. In Greek, it is parabole. Para is to place alongside. Balo is to throw. So you throw the known to the unknown. And in this case, what is known? It says, this is how it is with the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not known. But how do we come to know? To try to imagine the kingdom of God. Then he uses what is known. It is like a man. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the ground. And when a seed is scattered on the ground, the seed, there are different types of ground. There is come at be rocky, thorny, what and what, and a rich soil. And Jesus' method of teaching, that was his method of teaching. That's why the gospel says, he did not teach them except in parables. From the known to the unknown. The known is the scattering of the seed because where Jesus was teaching, everybody knew, everybody knew how to scatter seed. Not doing it the way we do it, but you get seed and you scatter like that. Like people, I think people from the West, they know that when you are planting below, even in the East, when you are planting below, you don't just go digging and you no, know, the below, the millet, you just take, not soup. Yes, just take the, the water and then you scatter. Some seeds are unlucky. Eh? They might be eaten by birds and what and what. But some get in rich soil. And this kingdom, the word is what Jesus has proclaimed. And he proclaimed to us. Now the reception is up to us. How do we receive the word of God? Imagine a sower who sows a seed, scatters the seed into the ground. And what happens after that? He abandons the seed. It is very clear. He goes to sleep and rise night and day. It is as if he has abandoned the seed to itself. The seed grows and sprouts. He knows not how. It's not just by chance. The provider, our provider, we said God is provident, provides for us. He takes care even while we, we are sleeping. And the farmer only goes back at the end when the fields for harvest, when, they are, when the, the seed is ready for harvest. That shows us the beauty and the wonders of God's, of God's kingdom. Once the seed of the kingdom is, is sown, it comes and it dwells within our hearts. And it grows slowly but surely and it transforms our hearts. The farmer scatters the seed and in a mysterious way it grows. He does not know how. But I said, it's not by chance, God is in charge and he sees, he sees to it that the seed sprouts. 
to come to bear fruit, to bear seed. So do our part. So, my brothers and sisters, we should do our part in scattering the seed, the word of God. And the rest is beyond our control. We watch. We proclaim the word of God. The conversion of hearts is not up to us. The Lord takes care of that. About the mustard seed, he the smallest, and yet it grows into a big bush. Take an example, my brothers and sisters. Our forefathers who brought us faith here. We talk of Perimapera, Brother Mansi, and a few others. They were few in number. They were humble. The beginning of the church was humble. Limited resources, but he did their work. They planted. They planted the church. But now, look how the church has grown to reach every part of Uganda. And now the church is no longer in the hands of foreigners, but in the church, in church, the natives are in church. That's how God's kingdom works. But a serious effort is needed to bring the light of the gospel to people in areas of poverty, oppression, violence, hatred, killings, grabbing of lands, denying people's rights, and so many. The litany is inexhaustible. You can talk the whole day. The mission of the church continues. We need to do our part and wait patiently on the Lord to establish the kingdom of peace, the kingdom of joy, the kingdom of reconciliation, and the kingdom of love. The seed grows on its own accord, but God is behind it. The smallness of the seed does not discourage. But God sees to it that it becomes a mighty, a mighty bush to host birds of the air. The kingdom of God begins in a small way, but it becomes great. But we are not discouraged even if we do not see the immediate fruits. St. Paul, in the second reading, tells us we are always courageous. Although we do not live, we live by faith, not by sight. Our trust is in him. And he says, St. Paul teaches, proclaim the word of God when it is to his son Timothy. Proclaim the word of God in a season or out of season. Do your part and leave the rest to God. We cry to God and God will transform situations. Elsewhere, St. Paul says, teaches us, I planted the seed. There is cooperation. Apollos watered, but who gave, who gave growth? And God gave growth, because that we cannot control. We are called upon to do our part. Paul planted, another one, Apollos watered, and they left it to God. People are asking themselves these days, what do we do in this situation? Where do we go? We go to God. God does not seem, some people say, God does not seem to hear our prayers. And that God does not see. It's not true. 
God hears every prayer addressed to him. But God is not a magician. And we cannot force him to act in our time. He is outside the time. And in our prayer we say, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will in heaven we don't know. But we should be humble enough to let God be God in heaven and on earth and in our hearts and in this world. What is the message? We must not give up. God's promises come to fulfillment. And that you can prove from Genesis to the last book, Revelation. That all God's promises are come to fulfillment. That God is still very much in control of our destiny. And no human being can, is in charge of our destiny. With God on our side, we are comfortable. With God, there is no full stop. Because he turns the full stop into a semicolon and it continues from there. My brothers and sisters, let us continue to plant the seed of hope to the hopeless. To give love to those who need it and the comfort. To support one with the other in this time we are living in. To pray, to take a possible precautions against COVID-19, to wash clean, social distancing, avoid crowded places, and above all, make a God our priority. As he says, without me, you cannot do anything. Strength, our strength, God, our God, strength of those who hope in you. We hope in you, our God. Hear our prayers, and since without you, we cannot do anything, we can do nothing. Grant, grant us always the help of your grace to transform this situation we are living in to good days so that we may continue praising your name and thanking you for your goodness to us. The Lord be with you. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. God our Father, thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for your protection and providence and for the graces you grant to us. 
we now present our petitions to you. For the church, that the hearts and the minds of those called to serve the Lord as priests, deacons, and in a consecrated life will be enriched in Christ and prayerfully graced with abundant spiritual gifts to serve you. We pray to the Lord. For our country, Uganda, that we may learn to live in peace with one another and that the leaders may make decisions based on moral principles and respect and, and protect life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Oh, yes. For our community of St. Augustine, that God may give us the grace to know his presence in our daily lives and to know him as our constant companion in times of loneliness, our gladness in times of suffering, and our hope in the times of uncertainty. We pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters who have contracted and are suffering from coronavirus, we pray that God, God's healing hand, may rest upon them and that this pandemic may come to an end very soon. We pray to the Lord. For all who seek happiness, wholeness and peace, the poor and the disillusioned, the sick and the suffering, the grieving and the despairing, that their hope in you and the generosity of others towards them may never waver. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, that they may have a share in the banquet of Christ eternally. Lord, hear us. In a moment of silence, let each one of us present their personal needs and intentions to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. We are going to conclude by calling upon the Blessed Virgin Mary. She's a very powerful intercessor in this veil of tears in which we are find ourselves. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
numbers for the offertory have been uh, eh, have been sent. Yes. So those who are ready for offertory, please do the needful. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant we pray that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Praise them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for our own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and angels, with throne and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. right gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to guard the people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts you have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and a drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
He is Lord. He is Lord. He is As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and the living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and the recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and the filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, our own Uganda martyrs, St. Augustine, the patron saint, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Pastor Mogheri our Apostolic Administrator, the order of bishops and the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Peripsu met cum ipso et in ipso, estivi deo pati omnipotenti, in uditate spiritu sancti, omniso no et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, in your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Oh, my God, you are
away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank all those who have participated in this Eucharist celebration, those who are present, and those who are following us on these services through this media. Let us sit for announcements. Bands of marriage, Matthias Matia Nwaine of Kira and Patricia Fiona Achan of Kira. Deus Dedi Tutumuhise of Nakulabie 
ende Sofia babili ebu na kulabye kizito ira tsinze of makerere chikoni ende Jose wa uh, Maria wa wa Maria of Kanyanya then sagabo of makerere and the brain da chomu hendo of Mawanda Road Frank Awampamba of Chanja and Efrida Namuko of Chanja Gilbert twesigomwe twesigomwe chebando and the Rosette Katusime of Chebando. David Kasule of Ujuko and the Chahuha of Ujuko. Eustus to Namasiko of Ujuko and Emily Fred Namusisi of Ujuko. Peter Kabagambe of Mawanda Road and the Rachel Nwagaba of Chibuli. Joseph Kato Malinga of Gayaza and Esther Kabanyana of Gayaza. Jeffrey Scott Sano of US and Maria Namakula of Urbaga. Let us pray for them. We want to wish you a fruitful, a fruitful week. You stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May God bless you with every heavenly blessing. Make you always holy and pure in his sight. Pour out in abundance upon you the riches of his glory. And I teach you with the words of truth. May he instruct you in the gospel of salvation. And ever endow you with fraternal charity. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you all and remain with you now and forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Chimayo.